Well, this was uh, originally a Methodist church. Uh, it was, in fact, when, when we started, like very originally in 1883, we were the first Methodist church south of the river. Uh, Winnipeg was quite small in those days. Uh, so that was a big deal. Uh, when we finally got this place, it was still the Methodist church before it became united, when the United Church began in 1925. So we have uh, basically a Methodist cathedral. So this held a lot of people, and as a result, it's a very large building. And the, uh, the layout is open. It's, it's almost a congregational kind of a layout because everybody can see what's going on, although it was a Methodist church. Uh, but it was based on the fact that we needed lots of people to see and hear what was going on. Well, he was the architect. John H.G. Russell. I guess he went to a lot of churches. I don't think he was a member here, but he was a very well-known architect. I'm amazed the number of churches he's done. And he did the, the auditorium, the Sunday School Auditorium first in 1906. Uh, then in 1910, uh, they built this building. And uh, this cost a bit more. Yeah, the land was 15,000. Sunday School was 24,000. And the church, it was about 60,000, the church. So we had the differences, and then of course there was a mortgage on it. Uh, but so much was done, I can't believe it. The pews are in a semicircular pattern so that everybody's looking in, and it's difficult to tell unless you pay attention to the walls. But if you look along the walls, you'll notice that the radiators are very close to the window by the front door. And as we get closer to the organ, they're a long way away from the windows. The, the floor actually drops by about 60 centimeters from front to back, from back to front, actually. Uh, so that drop is just about enough so you can just see over the head of the person in front of you. So there's a bit of a raking effect so that when the minister's looking at people, he can see all their faces. And when they're looking at him, they can all see him. windows were built here in Winnipeg by Winnipeg Paint and Glass in 1911 for the church. And there, there's not much iconography, but you can certainly see religious symbolism in them. Uh, but they were done uh, in, a, in an interesting way. They're not stained glass in the sense of bits of glass that are stuck into lead. Uh, they're colored. Uh, and the, the painting is done with a, a particular kind of paint that sticks very well to the glass. And if, if you notice on some windows, there's a bit more or less color in some of the panes. Partly that's, and some of them have been repaired, replaced and repaired over the years, and some have just faded in the sunshine. I think you'll find the north side windows are probably a little brighter than the south side windows that get more sun. Uh, but they are original to the building, and they are quite magnificent. The, the best ones are the three over the front door. And the best view of that is sunset when you're sitting in the choir loft. They're, they're really quite amazing.
it's, a, uh, it's one of the oldest, if not the oldest, pipe organ in town. Uh, currently, that still survives anyway. That's uh, it's built in 1911, about the same time the church was finished by Cassavant of St. Hyacinth, Quebec. Uh, it's a fascinating instrument. It is in a sort of French style. A very, very interesting sound coming out of it. Uh, fills this room beautifully. I think it's, it's one of the nicest instruments in the city. Uh, very, very uh, interesting character to the sound. It supports the choir very nicely. It supports the congregation very nicely. If, if you look at the organ right now, you'll notice the pipes are all painted silver. Uh, we had an organist a number of years ago who uh, wanted it to be silver. Uh, his, his view of an organ was that that's where they were. But when the church was built, the organ was actually painted uh, a gold color, which had dulled over time. There's, there's a very golden hue in the place, and they su suggested that, that that was what the reason was that they had the gold pipes, so that it would blend into the building. And uh, as I say, a number of years ago, I think in the early 80s, the organist we had at that time uh, chose to paint them silver. It looks different because of the white trim and the white caps on top of the towers and the uh, limestone trim around the doorways. Uh, it really is, is quite a spectacular look when you come up to it from the outside. Uh, and as you come up the, the front stairs, it's quite high. And there's a very large, wide tinnel stone staircase that's it's quite magnificent. And again, when you look at it, you have that sense of, of upwardness and power and, and the might of the church sort of thing. It, it's a very powerful image and uh, very humbling as you come in, which is what's intended to be, I think.